So you get three rolls on the tower, and I have eight random questions here. And whatever you roll, that's where we start. Should I be scared? You hesitated. No, I mean. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait. Do I just roll? So you roll. Have you ever used the dice tower before? (laughs) No, I'm I'm so new (gasps) at life. (laughs) So to be fair, I hadn't used dice towers before this. But you just put it there, and then it rolls out into the grass. I I feel like I need a booster seat because I'm I'm five. If anyone wants to know, I'm like five two on a really good day. On a really bad day, I'm like five foot. So I mean, I'm I'm not much taller than you. Yeah. Okay. You get the opportunity to guest star on the TV show of your choice. Oh. What do you pick and who are you going to play in it? The bear. New oh. character. Let's go. I'm ready. Hi. <laughs> oh, do you cook? No. I'm really bad at I no, you know what? I can, you know, push a microwave button really well. I'm really really good at that. <laughs> We're on the same wavelength. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, I'm not a good cook cuz I blame it on my height. Because I have to climb up the counters. <laughs> like, I have special... Sh- I'm not... I have I steps on the kitchen step stool. Yeah, but I wear, like... Sh- like, right now, I'm wearing these boots be- so I can, like, be tall and, like, reach things. Um, I'm so sick. <laughs> I hit the point where I realize just, like, heels and any shoe that gives me height are so uncomfortable and I just don't care enough anymore. So now yeah. I never wear them and I don't care how tall I look. <laughs> why Why should we do a cooking show where we're just like wearing heels? Okay, and it's yeah. just us like trying to I'm going to throw myself under the bus with this comment. Everyone out there is going to know where this is going. But let's say you had to make yourself eggs. How would you make them? Is this a trick question? It, like a little bit, but not really. Not for I'm you. I'm really bad at trivia. Okay. <laughs> so, like, also, I recently watched Jeopardy. So bad at that. Great at Family Feud. Fun fact. What about Wheel of Fortune? (laughs) (laughs) That's all I needed to know. know. Um, How do I make eggs? I crack an egg. Okay, I'm like looking for you for approval. I'm like, okay, then maybe I put in, you know, some creamer, just a dash. Oh, wow, okay. You do it up. Okay. (laughs) You mix it up. We have a recipe here now. This is already advanced for me. (laughs) And then you put, uh, heat up the pan, put a little butter, cook it, make it really fast. Am I missing this question? No, you're, win- you're winning. <laughs> Everyone out there gives me shit because one time it came to light that I will make scrambled eggs in the microwave. Oh, no. No, That's the I've first never time heard you stop talking since <laughs> I met you. <laughs> um, okay, I have so many questions. Can we, can we, can you... Have- so Speak on this. It's it's very it's very easy, and it's no mess. You don't have to clean the pan. The pan. <laughs> Shit, I'm like digging myself the hole all over again. I love how you're like, I don't have to clean anything. You microwave. You crack the egg. You put it in like let's say a paper bowl, and then you put it in the microwave, and you put the microwave on for like ten seconds, and then you like whisk whisk whisk, and then you put it back, and you do it again, and then before you know it, you have like fluffy scrambled eggs. Slightly different texture, admittedly, than if you made it in a pan, but they're still good and they're still well cooked. Are they actually good? Or do you have to put a lot of ketchup on it or hot sauce? No. Salt. But they, <laughs> they are they are legitimately good. I will admit that's how my mom used to make them for me as a oh, kid. So it's like nostalgic. Nostalgic, but I wonder if just like my taste buds were formed to accommodate eggs cooked that way. So I just hope you know tomorrow morning I'm going to make eggs in a microwave a report. and I will give you a full Yelp review. <laughs> and you're going to be like, <laughs> I would love a Yelp review. <laughs> I don't care love if it's eggs. I don't care if it's one or five stars. I just want a Yelp review. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Yes. And I'm not judging. I was just okay. so shocked. I was like, this is a new one. <laughs> this is great. So now you need a roll on the bear and you just like swoop in as a bear version of me and you're like, listen guys. <laughs> Listen, You're guys. professionals, but let's make this in the microwave. Yeah, <laughs> that's not just like meet with the director. I'd be like, yeah, I can cook. I can, you know, eggs oh, microwave. I'm losing my mind right now. All right, second roll on the tower. All right, here we go. CDC, I have to slowly get up. So I just need you to like react. Give me your honest reaction when I say this. You are home alone and you see a spider. What do you do? Run away. Okay, run away. No. I feel like that says a lot about someone, what they do when they see a bug. I mean, should I be, pretend to be badass? Like, I'd kill it. No. Oh, no. No. <laughs> that's, that's, that's like my anti-answer. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm not, I don't like scary things. I mean, my dad took me to see War of the Worlds when I was, like, six, <laughs> and he said, we were going to go to a kid's movie. It's not a kid's movie. What scared you most about War of the Worlds? The, when he goes into the, like, I haven't seen it since then, since I've been sick. The basement? No, when the basement. The basement. Oh my god! No, but when he's in the creature, <gasps> in the thing, and then they go. Into- yeah, 
I get I, it. I, I get you it. get it. I talked to my dad about this. I was like, it was traumatic. He's like, I don't regret it. Do you like, like scary movies? I have to be with someone. Okay. And then I need them to like sleep over. <laughs> What's the scariest movie you've ever seen? I don't because that's like. <laughs> But I will say I love the artistry of like Silence of the Lambs. Okay. You know, like I do like thrillers, but like Paranormal Activity, absolutely on the train to Nopeville. Not much keeps me up at night. I would say Paranormal Activity is probably the most recent movie to do that, where I was like laying in bed and looking in the hallway and just expecting a a bathroom light to turn on without me doing it. And you're okay with that? I kind of enjoy that. There's something wrong. Yeah, there's something (laughs) wrong with me. You just see all over my apartment. There's all these little like jump scare possibilities where there's like a Pennywise standee here, like a Michael Myers mask there. And I love how excited you are about this. You're like, I love it. My light might turn on and maybe it might be my a neighbors ghost. loved when I put a life size Megan decal in my window and they could just like see it from across the way. Oh my okay, so however, I am into 48 hours. 48 hours? It's a, it's like when like they k- kill it's like a reality TV show. You've never what, heard of 48, 48 hours? 48 hours? What is this? It's like they have 48 hours to find like the killer. Like Where I, do you watch this? Um Maybe Hulu. Ooh. I don't. I don't know. But it's kind of like I don't like scary movies, but I love watching like murder documentaries and like falling asleep to that. So I don't know if that's murder a, doc. <laughs> you don't like the fake stuff. You only like the real that's, stuff. That's what I mean. Like I don't mess with like ghosts and stuff. But if it's like a documentary of like murderers, I'm like sign me up. Oh, that's fascinating. Do you like haunted houses? I don't know why I jumped to that next, but because Halloween was just here. I mean, I haven't been to a haunted house in so long. Mm. But I feel like I'm small enough that I can just like get by. <laughs> You know what I mean? Tactic, like, no it? one will know that I exist. You know, I'll just, I look like You'll a child. Missed. Yeah, I'll get missed. Like, no one's going to jump out and, and or, scare me. Or they'll think you're you're a young <laughs> one, and they'll just be like, let's not scare her. <laughs> they'll be like, she's five. Like, it's fine. <laughs> oh, all right. Another role. I'm curious if you get this question I have my eye on. I'm probably going to ask it anyway. I especially love asking this question with ensembles that I love. Uh-huh. There is a zombie outbreak. You could pick two co-stars from Gen V to fight alongside you. Who do you pick that'll give you the best chance of surviving? Uh, Derek, I can just hide behind him. <laughs> Have you, he also since between season one and season two, he's like really like very, very strong. So I feel like he'd just be a protector okay. in that way. And then London just is such a great planner. So I feel like I just have to sit back and watch these two just like save my life. Cause you know, I, I just die. And then revert back to haunted uh, house tactics and just hide. <laughs> just hide. I think, honestly, I think in a zombie apocalypse, I would just like climb a tree and just hope for the best. Like, I don't think. That's not the worst idea in the world. I mean, I know this about myself and maybe like I'm kind of insecure about it, but like I would not survive in the Hunger Games. Like I I know this. <laughs> it's a good time to bring that up. I literally just did a ladies night with Rachel this morning. You did? I feel like we can joke about it because it's not an interview about that movie, but it felt like it was in poor taste and defeated the point of like what the Hunger Games franchise is about. If I, yeah. if I was like to her, can you survive the Hunger Games? Can, can she survive the Hunger Games? I mean, I kind of believe she can. I think she could, too. I mean, I haven't met her. Are you familiar with the new movie? I I, want to go see. I mean, a huge fan of the franchise. Have you seen it? Yeah. I've I've seen it twice, actually. I really like it. Um, Seen it twice? it's It's a prequel, and her character in it... Like there, there is some power that comes with with song and the ability right, right. to like sing and sway people that are watching. So like she can sing. So I have to imagine she would do well in that respect. And then maybe more people watching would like send her gifts and tools and stuff. Wait, that's so funny. If you're like, would you survive a zombie co- uh, b- apocalypse or like a Hunger Games? Like, yeah, I sing. I can sing my I way mean, through anything. I mean, that's such a flex. Honestly, I would kind of believe that with her. I mean, I I can't wait to see the movie. Like, I it's I would. Good. Is it? Yeah, it is really good. Oh God, I'm very wait. impressed. Is it out yet, or am I way late to the party? Tomorrow. Look at my the watch 17. that I don't have. Oh <laughs> I was like looking, I was like, mm-hmm. You are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> We've only been talking for a little bit, and I'm already certain of this. Are we friends? Is that too yes. forward? I'm, I'm your first interview. This is amazing. Are we bonded for life? You know my nickname. You could say it. It's okay. Oh God, no, it's Everybody like, knows. It's between us. <laughs> <laughs> Poopsie. Just say it. <laughs> Hey, Poopsie, how are you doing? Should I use, like, my podcast voice? Only, only you, my niece, and my nephews can call me that. I feel so special. (laughs) I'm blushing. (laughs) What's up, everyone? Welcome back for a brand new edition of Collider Ladies Night. I am especially excited about this one. 
for like a million reasons. I like tried to think of the first reason I wanted to say, but then a million reasons flooded my brain. Lizzie Broadway from Gen V. And this is your first interview ever. I'm like so, should I lie? I should lie. I'm not nervous at all. I feel like I get more nervous that it's your first interview. I want I want to start you like on the highest possible level and give you all the faith in the world in this end of the process. Oh my God, I'm just excited to do this with you. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. Can I tell you something else? Oh my God, tell so me. So I was lucky enough to get to moderate something for the movie Ghosted. And I'm like sitting there watching the movie and I see the scene like at home and I'm looking <laughs> and I'm like, like, who is that playing your sister? Like, what no. screen present? I swear to God, I'm not bullshitting you I at all. I paid her twenty dollars. Like to not say at this. all. But I, I, I said that, and I'm like, I gotta look her up. But then, you know, it was a little while until I got to see Gen V. I'm like, who is that? Oh, I connected the dots, and I get it. I'm serious. Dead Wait, serious. Wait, that actually makes me really kind of emotional. That's really sweet. It's true, though. It's That's true. so kind. Oh, my God. I have, like, no words. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, can we be besties? What was the performance you saw, movie you saw, personal experience you had, you name it, that first made you say to yourself, I have to be an actor? Kathy Bates in Titanic. <gasps> In Titanic. I thought yeah. you were, I, I don't know why I assumed you were going to say misery when you don't like horror. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's just phenomenal. I think I just remember just watching that movie and, and just being like, who is this person? What a and, good answer. Yeah, and honestly, like, if I met Kathy Bates, I would forget my name and just bow to her. I would just be like, I don't know. I'm like, hello. <laughs> I don't blame you. She's, she's, she's acting royalty. She's acting royalty, and I just, I th- I don't know. She's just been a big mentor of mine. Huh. Like, if I met her, I would just be like, we're breathing the same air. Oh, my God. <laughs> when you first pinpointed the dream to become an actor, what did making it look like to you? Was there any particular person you wanted to follow in their footsteps, excel yeah. in a certain genre? You know, it's interesting. I, I acted when I was younger, but just as a hobby. I didn't know if I necessarily wanted to do it. Um, and then four years ago, I had a friend who was in the industry, and I was like, okay, either I'm going to be a computer science engineer or an actor. So I was like, okay, I'll give myself five years. And this was like fall of 2019. Um, And now I'm sitting here with you. So it's kind of in a way where I kind of fell into it. And this is like my time of taking it seriously. So I don't, I like to be surprised. Oh my God. This is very exciting because I've never had like this particular, one of the greatest things I think about Collider Ladies Night and why I often repeat certain questions is because I love to emphasize that everyone's journey is different and everyone is right. This is like the first time I think I've heard a story quite like this, which is really cool. I want to go back to the computer science thing first. Yeah. Did you study that in school? So my, my whole side of my mom's family are like geniuses. I was like, born on the <laughs> wrong side and it's kind of what they they did so I was like I was just gonna follow their foot footsteps so I was going to school for a little bit for business and then I was gonna transition to to computer science oh and then my. um I was like you know what acting seems kind of interesting to me I was like I'll give myself five years you know and see if I can do something with it and I thought it was fun and yeah, so that's kind of my weird journey. I'm especially impressed by comp sci, though. I tried so hard to study, 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 and like yeah. wrap my head around coding. Can't do it. It's a different Can't language, for yeah. sure. My yeah. brain doesn't work that way. Yeah, I, I'm again. I, I have. I wasn't so involved in 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 the degree to like know if I'd be good at it. But that's. I was always good at math, so hmm. I was like, okay. Most yeah. impressive. Most impressive that you could do comp sci stuff and act as well as you do <laughs> because. I went to film school, and one of the most traumatizing moments of my life is I was on the producing track, but they made every single person take directing uh, actors. Okay. And what the exercise was was you had to experience the feeling of being directed by someone. So, like, we'd all get the chance to direct someone, and then someone would direct us. And it's hard. It's hard. Wait, how was film school for you? It was incredible. It was one of the it best was. decisions I made. Yeah. And that another thing, everybody's path is different. You don't have to study your craft in a school setting if you don't want to and that doesn't feel right to you. I, I definitely needed it. Where did you go? I went to Columbia. That felt it always feels obnoxious when I say That's it. But such a flex. I'm, I'm, so I'm very proud. I, I went, went to Columbia. I went to a wonderful program and a lot of my really close friends are just super talented and thriving in this business right now. I'm very late to the party, but congratulations How on getting think? into Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a few years later. But that's so cool. Like, I'm always inspired cool. by people who go to film school or, or who are classically trained because that's not my path. So, like, after this interview, I'll probably, like, 
ask you 100 questions. Well, do you have any resources in your back pocket when you made the choice to go down this path and give it a shot for X amount of years? Did you sign up for any classes, find an acting coach that really spoke to you? You know what? I have an acting coach who uh, coaches me um, on Ghosted and, and on Gen V, and his name's Ted. And he is the the best thing that ever happened. Like, he's also my therapist and also just, like, cre- he allowed me a lot of freedom. So I'm not classically trained in that way. I usually just do, just work with him, you know, and kind of do my crazy, crazy process. What is it about him and his way of teaching that you think aligns with how you like to absorb notes and grow? Well, I don't like playing by, by the rules. Like, I create my own rules, and he gives me a runway to do that. Like, structurally. Like, I have a hundred million ideas. And he's like, okay, Lizzie, you have a lot of ideas. Let's, like, make it linear. And then it's kind of that way. So we, it's just like a collaborative process. Mm. You know? there's We teach each other in a, in a really cool way. It's so important when you find the right person, person. for something like that. And, like, yeah. your skills complement each other. And, like, that person can wind up bringing the best out of you and putting their focus on the right I thing. I got really lucky. Like, I... I love you, Ted, if you're watching this. <laughs> but no, truly, like, I would not be the artist I am without him. I wouldn't have the confidence that I do without him. Like, oh. you know, like, people come into your life and, you're like, they show you aspects of yourself. So. I have a lot of questions about confidence because that's very difficult to find in this industry. Yeah. <laughs> what is the first win you experienced in this industry that made you stop and say to yourself, I made the right choice. This is the career path for me. Probably working with Dexter Fletcher. So have you cool. met him? Yes. He I'm is- a big fan. I I just had uh, went to a comedy show with him like last week and I love I love him very much. He when you're on set, you he's just so excited. You know what I mean? And he really saw something in me before I even saw myself. So that was just like as because he was also an actor, mm-hmm. you know, before he was a, a director. So I felt very seen by him. And in that moment, like just us collaborating together, he's like, You're you're on the right path, kid. And I think I needed to hear that. From someone, you know, who's, I mean, he's Dr. Fletcher, you know, and and I think that was the moment that I was like, hey, kid, you're on the right track. That's because so this important. industry is so crazy. You never know. It's crazy. It's cra- That's why I always ask uh, questions about confidence, too. I have one more that I'll save yeah. for further in. But I because love you, I, Dexter Fletcher. Yeah. I'm, a lot of people out there love him. He's you know, very, he, very, very talented. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> he's, like, he's so excited, and it just makes you so excited to come to set, you know? It makes it, it makes it exciting for me to watch his movies because I'm— confident I could feel that enthusiasm leaping off the screen and also makes my job especially easy whenever I do an interview with him or moderate for him because like he's just a breeze he's like a big ball of enthusiasm and his answers are so incredibly thoughtful and giving I love it yeah I can just like if we're at a dinner table I'm just like just look at him 100% get that yeah and it was just it was just really I was just I'm just really grateful to to have met him Mm -hmm. Like, he's just been, I don't think he knows this. He's, he was a huge inspiration to me. And um, he, he touched me in a lot of ways, for sure. I as love an artist. hearing that about, like, people with big platforms in this industry, that they're also using it to boost others. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. And, yeah, I, I love him very much. <laughs> All right. Getting into Gen V now. Okay. How did the audition come up? What is that story? Oh, <laughs> how did the Gen V audition? I was just auditioning for other things, so... I just sent in a tape. I got this random tape called Untitled Boy Spinoff. And I'm surprised they revealed that much. Yeah. I, they're so secretive on this <laughs> show. I didn't even know I was a superhero. I didn't know my superpower. I knew I was called Emma, and I got fake sides. That's all I knew. So I sent in this tape. Didn't hear anything back for a month. Then I got a call back, which lasted for like an hour and a half. And I thought it was like really bad because I was like, what call back as, like, is for an hour and a half? Um, That's a good sign. So I, but, but my <laughs> mind is like, oh, so bad. Uh, and then two days later, I, I got the call, and they invited me to be on the show. So your mm-hmm. life kind of changes so quickly. During that callback, did you get more information about the character? Nope. 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 I didn't know I was a superhero until, like, probably three weeks after booking it. I thought I was the Huey of the group. <gasps> like, I, you know what I mean? Because I had no script. I, I was so in the dark. So I kind of was just like... 
oh, I'm a superhero? What's my power? And they oh, wouldn't boy. even tell me that. Oh, my God. This is a really big question, mm-hmm. a two-parter. You'll learn soon. I like compound questions. When you first learned who she was truly, what quality of hers were you most looking forward to playing? But then I also want to know a quality of hers that you found along the way that wound up being more creatively fulfilling to explore than you ever could have imagined. God, that's such a good question. You know, with Emma, she wears a lot of masks to be liked and to be loved. So I love her sensitivity. But I also hate her sensitivity. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I think what was really exciting throughout the, the sh- course of the show is her strength. That was fun to play. Because I didn't know if I was going to be able to do that. So that was exciting as, a, as an artist, for sure. Because I didn't know her arc in the beginning of the show. I'm going to put the spoiler warning up in a minute. <laughs> but... Like, you're, she's so strong. Like, one of my favorite early scenes, I think it's, like, one of the, one of your first scenes, not the first scene, but later on. I love how she responds to Marie when she gets invited to the party. <laughs> yeah. And, like, you know she really wants to go, and you know she's encouraging her to go because it will benefit her, but also you could feel that so sincerely she wants her to take this opportunity yeah. and be with that group of people that she wants to study with. And to yeah. be able to balance both at the same time, not easy. Not easy. And, I mean, she's the best way to to talk about Emma is she's like a golden retriever, you know? Mm-hmm. But she, um, I mean, Emma has no sense of gravity. You know, <laughs> she's kind of falling through the sand. She'll cling on to anyone or anything that kind of shows her any kind of attention, you know? So, um, and as you go through her journey, she realizes her true potential. Mm-hmm. I have follow-up questions to that. I'm just going <laughs> to warn everybody. I mean, ev- you've all had time to watch Gen V. What are you we're doing, guys? We're going we're gonna to open the spoiler doors right now. You are free and clear to talk about anything you want at this point. Okay. One other question that I had had that that comment was making me think of is, like, I don't know how much backstory work you like to do. Some yeah. people like to do it. Some people don't. What do you think it is about her that makes her so, like, open and un? understanding and like willing to accept people because the one moment that I keep thinking about is you know when they lose their memory and she forgets who Sam Mm -hmm. is just how quick she is when he knows and she doesn't that she's like like no I do probably know you because she was never accepted Mm -hmm. you know so when you feel like that you you have a lot of compassion and that's Emma you know she's gone through have you heard that the funniest people are the saddest yeah that's Emma. Oh, my you know? heart for her. <laughs> I know. but Well, because she does that also with, I think also while oozing some sense of strength. Yeah. I know it's not I know it's not there to her core and not there maybe yet, but it will. But that's, as we explore other uh, seasons, hopefully, I mean, there, the finale is kind of like, oh, mm, mm, there's so mm. much to discover. discover. Yeah. Going back to the beginning episodes of the season, right. for you, which scene would you credit with helping you put her into focus the most, where all the scenes you filmed after, you found yourself referring back to that one often? God, that's so good. I love the scene. Do you want a white claw? It's like 10 in the morning. Because there it was this energeticness about her that I loved that I didn't want to mm. lose. And this um, that was a big moment. And also... 103, like episode three with the mom dynamics to really hit core of how unlovable she felt and gross and ugly. And I wanted to carry that energetically through the rest of the season. Mm. Um, so probably the beginning, <laughs> do you want to wake well? And mostly, I think the whole episode for 103 was mm-hmm. really where I really understood that character. Deeply. Okay, I'll go there next with probably the heaviest question of the bunch. Okay. And this this speaks to what I appreciate about Gen V the most. It's the fact that it can be a fun superhero show, mm-hmm. but also one that does not shy away from very real challenging human truths that a lot of people out there go through. So what kind of conversations did you have with the showrunners, writers, directors, whoever, in terms of how you wanted to present what she's going through in a way that felt, you know, grounded, respectful, and... Right. Where someone could maybe see themselves in her. Well, you know, it's hard to explain. Like, I shout out to Tara Michelle. Like, they... So good. I, I love those women, and I don't want to be, like, weird, but they gave me such a safe space to fail. Like, I would come in with 50 questions, and they wouldn't make me feel silly for asking them, even if one worked, you know, or 100 questions, and they'd invite them in. So because of them, I'm truly a more confident artist. One of the best qualities to have in a showrunner. Yeah, and <laughs> this was my first show, so... 
I didn't know what a showrunner did. So I didn't know how busy they were, but they took the time with me, you know, and I'm so unbelievably grateful for them. But so I'm kind of, I am a very visual person. So with Emma, I, as much as an internal journey she's going, going through, I really wanted it to be visual for the audience. So I had the privilege of um, collaborating with Laurent Montgomery, our amazing costume designer. And like for the first two episodes, like I said, like Emma, you know, the funniest people are the saddest. So you'll see her wearing a lot of like smiley faces mm -hmm. and a lot of vibrant clothing to mask how she feels inside. Right. And then when you hit 103, that's that's its own visual journey, you know, with the big clothes and, you know, then um, the sad beauty and then the hero moment. Um, and then I got to work with Colin Penman in Indiana, who's my makeup artist, because I like the idea of shedding the skin. So I had a spray tan of 101 and she, Emma, shed her skin when she was gaining confidence and shed it. And after 106, when she started getting confidence. So that's like what I, that's what I love to bring is just like the visual aspect. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the audience will see. But that's what I love. I feel like even if someone doesn't see and clock details like that, it's it's, it's informing, informing their experience. experience. Yeah. So that was the most mm. exciting. When I get to work on something like this, I love to collaborate. And it's because of Tara Michelle that they were like, okay, kid, go, go be free. And you don't really have it all the time. So, like, that was just – I got to be an artist because of them. My head is exploding. So I love you, Tara questions. Michelle. They're probably not going to watch this, but thank you. Like those two women. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I had a million ideas. You know, so they're like, here you go, kid. Okay, I'll play with that then. And now I'm going to forget all my other follow up questions. Sorry. <laughs> you got the opportunity to play with ideas. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me one idea that they liked, they embraced, we could see in the final show, but then also one idea that like you pitched and it didn't happen and it's okay because you pitched oh it God. and you tried, but it didn't work. So, I mean, they were pretty open to a lot of I I ideas. I mean, it's interesting what, you know, when you pitch ideas and they say, sure, 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 do, do that. But then what you see in the edit is very different. Mm -hmm. So like I did like a lot of quirky, weird things. Like Emma would only close things with her feet. She'd burp like really quirky, weird things with, with her. Um, one thing that they didn't, I mean, they really gave me free reign. Um, yeah, I don't think they said no. I mean, I'd, I'd come in, I love to improv. So I'd, I'd love, I'd, come in with like a lot of alt lines and mm -hmm. they gave me a lot of freedom and sometimes they'd be like yay nay or and it was just like a really collaborative process which you don't get a lot that's such a good mentality to have like I bring up a thing that doesn't pan out because I feel like sometimes when people play they could think it's a failure if something they try doesn't get included and that's no. not the case at all I love failing you you know what I mean like you have to you have to and that's because of them I could be absolutely fearless in my approach mm. And as an artist, like, I went into the show not thinking I could do a television show. Like, I didn't go into this thinking I could play Emma. You know what I mean? So, like, because of those two women, I'm, like, vouching for I love them so much. Because of those women, I'm, like, oh, wow, I can do a television show. Oh, wow, I could play Emma. You know You're what I mean? You're getting, like, the best look at my stressed out follow-up question face <laughs> right now. The I hope I'm answering these questions you, well. No, you are. Well, I mean, I think that is a sign when you answer them well and just, like, sparks go off. And okay. I have a million follow-ups. I wanted to go back to something else you had mentioned before because you said you didn't know what a showrunner did. And one, no. thing, one thing I always love to ask is for a seemingly silly question that maybe you were afraid to ask when you first started acting— that you would encourage newer actors to, you know, have the courage to ask. It's okay that you don't know that now. Oh, my God. I So I did other other projects for sure, mm -hmm. but I was quite the pinball, you know. So I had this great idea to be like, let's give Emma 10 marks in a scene. Like you'll see in like the first scene of hers that she's like going to the fridge and then going on the bed. And then oh, do you know any marks? Mar like marks. Sorry, I like, see what you mean. You mean? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, like, I can hit one mark. I can't hit ten. Mm -hmm. So ask questions. And, like, I would ask the crew. The crew would be like, Lizzie, find your light. And I was like, we're playing Where's Waldo? Like, what do you what do you mean, like, find your light? Like, what is that? So it's kind of, I mean, just don't be afraid to ask questions. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone wants you to succeed. I know this, like, like people just want to be small. I mean, that's... Again, human I mean, truths truth. that we're processing See, through genre shows. Yeah. No, like everyone has felt not good enough. Everyone's felt like they had to be small in order mm -hmm. to be accepted. So 
my best advice is to use your voice mm. and say please and thank you. You know what I mean? Like, can that just exist beyond like that? Sets, but like, hey guys, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Can you help me out? And they're like, yeah, you know, like, be honest mm. that like, hey guys, I'm insecure. I have no idea what I'm doing. And they're like, we got you. And that's kind of the mentality the crew had. I mean, shout out to that crew. Mm-hmm. I am obsessed with them. I they are the real heroes of the show. You. Yeah. This is a show that doesn't come together as well as it does unless every single department is delivering peak work. And when you have showrunners who can take all that high quality work and bring it together seamlessly. It's a village. It takes everyone, mm. you know, so... I'm just, like, really grateful to be here. <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame you. Speaking of everyone, I'll go to the ensemble yeah. now. Uh, surprise, surprise, another big old compound question, because one thing I love highlighting is the variety of different approaches to acting mm-hmm. there are out there. So can you pinpoint two members of the Gen V ensemble with completely different approaches to the work, where when you're their scene partner, you know you'll have a different acting experience? Oh, my God. That's, you know what's so interesting on Emma's journey, like— She's very far removed from the Scooby gang. <laughs> you know, she really goes through her own thing for the mm-hmm. first, like, <laughs> season one. So, um, you know, I, that's really, that's really hard. I think, I think we have, I, we never really talked about our processes. I think everyone was, we just wanted to make a great show. So everyone, I mean, my only scene partner was like a jazz who played Marie, so which good. she's so good. so good. She's so good. She's so fun. And then Asa Gurman, mm-hmm. brilliant. I can't even talk about it. Brilliant. <laughs> He's brilliant. And then an alpaca. And then <laughs> and then a blue box because I mm-hmm. had, every time I was tiny, I had to do it to a laser dot on the ceiling. So I could, I only had to go off my Asa Gurman's voice. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I think our approaches are, I think just working with different actors. I don't know. I never really talked to them about my approach. Like, of different methods, you know what I mean? In that case, to build on that, can you maybe tell me something different a co-star did during a scene that inspired you to maybe adapt and try something new and for the better because they opened you up to a different approach to something? Um, oh my gosh, this is such a good <laughs> question. Um, okay, for the dip top scene, when <laughs> I called him, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> dip top, dip top, I don't know, man. Um, uh, Sam like yells at me, and I was that was my first introduction to Sam's character, so I had no idea how he was gonna play it. And like, you know, he like goes up, and then he just like screams at me, mm-hmm. and I and that reacted something different in me. And I think working with Asa was just such. I mean, he's such an original actor and so fearless in his approach that I never knew what he was gonna do. So every day felt like. Here we go. We're on yeah. a roller coaster, you know? So I think every moment that we had, I'm sure there was something that just inspired something new in me. He might be the answer to this question, but can you tell me a time on set when someone was like just the scene partner you needed, where it helped you reach something in your own performance that was very challenging that you might not have been able to tap into without them? The finale scene. I love that scene. It's a great scene. And, you know, it's interesting. It was kind of both of ours last day of filming. So it was very cathartic for us. And um, we just gave it our all. Like, after doing such a long production, you just, it was this huge release. So that, I mean, we just, we just let it all out that day. And it was probably the most freeing I've ever felt as an artist. And it was because of him. You are as good as your scene partner, you know what I mean? Always. And um, German and Jazz and I, we have this great dance, you know. And I, we, I got really lucky. With a scene like that finale scene, yeah. do, do you feel it in the moment when you're like, we're crushing this, we're crushing this? I think I was so in the Emma mode that I couldn't see straight. I remember, because it was so interesting, we shot that for like 12 hours, and then... That one scene, that one conversation? For like seven hours, like very long time. It Every uh-huh. single minute is well spent, spent. because that's... <laughs> There's a lot of exceptional scenes in this show. From a performance perspective, that is top tier, the highlight. Yeah, oh, for, I mean thank it. You. I mean it. <laughs> thank you. No, um, and then we had to wait two hours because then we had to move to blue screen. So I had to shoot because we had to move plates. So I don't know. I mean, that was just, that was, I that was, just, yeah, it was just. 
this... You should be very proud of that scene. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it was just so cathartic for, for German and I, you know, because it was like our last big hurrah. <sighs> and like our character, like we love Sam and Emma so much that we're just like, all right, here we go. We're going to act. <laughs> scene shattered my heart into a million <laughs> pieces, a million pieces. Really, though, like beautiful, beautiful work. Oh, thank you. All right. I'm going to start to move towards the future. Okay. I don't even know if you have answers to some of these, but and hopefully they're safe questions because I know you probably can't reveal right. any like legitimate things that are going to happen down the line. The first question I have is, do you know the specifics of the uh, Buster Beaver incident? No. Okay. I don't know anything. <laughs> they don't tell They're so secretive on this show. Like I asked probably the writers and I think one time and well, usually I do a backstory, but like with specific things like that, I'm just like, I'm just going to wait until it's revealed. Um, but no one tells me anything. They're like, yeah, you just had a you just had an incident when you got really big. I was like, all right, I'll come up with something. But other than that, they gave me no specifics. I had a feeling the answer to that question was going to be something like that. Here's another one that you probably don't know the answer to. But this is like one of the things that weighed most heavily on my mind after the massacre at God You. Oh, God. Is David Caruso OK? <laughs> Is, is it okay? <laughs> oh my god! You know what's really funny? Has Emma ever fed him? Like she goes back and forth to the drive-in like four times. Like where? It looked like he had a proper setup, which was making me feel better. Like yeah, a, but like you an still have to feed the animal. I mean, he's yeah. probably dead. <laughs> oh, no, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> Could you imagine opening season two? It's just me and DC just oh, being like, god. he survived. I'm, but honestly, that's how I could see season two opening. <laughs> opening. It's just like the ruins of the school. And, and then it's just, just like, David Caruso just like <gasps> running. Oh, but then he's alive. I like this. I I thought of the darker version of that. That would be so funny in the in the finale if like everything, you know, Homelander just lays her everyone. And then you just see DC, just David Caruso, just like running through the, oh, the shot. God. That would be so funny. I'll squeeze in one more question before I move to my future questions. Okay. Going into the show, wait, actually, before I even ask this, when you started filming, did you have all the scripts? Did you know what was going no. to happen? No, I knew briefly, like, kind of an arc. I, I th This is what they told me. Emma may find her confidence. <laughs> so I was like, okay, okay. So I think I got the first two, and then we were filming 101, and then I think I got 103. Okay. So, but here's the thing, again, shout out to Tara Michelle. I would meet with them for, like, an hour, hour and a half before each script and like go through my ideas and like what worked, what didn't, what's working mm. in the dailies, what's not. And like be like, Hey, this idea, can we foreshadow it in a different episode? You know what I mean? So yeah, I didn't really have a lot of information, but I try to peel it out of them. Okay. I'm <laughs> going to rephrase this question then again, another compound question. Can you give me an example of a scene that you were really nervous to film, uh -huh. but once you were filming it, you're like, this is a breeze. We got this. But then I also want to know one that kind of caught you by surprise in terms of, you know, how much you had to sit with it and think about it and mm. workshop it. So blue screen. <laughs> blue you screen. have a lot too. Yeah. And that's a Skill. Yeah. Like I, for, cause I'm doing everything to, I think I said this briefly, I was doing everything to a laser dot mm -hmm. on the ceiling. So I'm doing this three page dialogue scene and just going off Ace's voice. And you have to pray in those moments that your imagination is enough, right? So like, but it was also so freeing. So that was probably, I was most nervous for blue screen days. But also the most exciting because I felt like I could do cartwheels and no one would say anything. That's like there was probably no... prime opportunity to play. Yeah, because I was like, I could scream and no one could tell me what to do and all these things. But that was the most nervous because I was just like, I can't look another actor in the eye, you know? So I was like, that was really nerve wracking. Um, Understandable so, there. Yeah. I was like, this is <laughs> such a skill doing it to a tennis ball. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? Um, and then one that I had to really sit with was... I would probably say the finale. I think the finale, yeah. I I didn't know how it was going to turn out. That was something that I I prepped, but then I allowed myself freedom because I didn't know what Sam was going to do. And it's purely off Sam's, re like Emma's reaction off Sam. So that was really nerve-wracking going into that scene, trusting, like, I don't know what's going to happen. So it was like all this prep up to this finale, and I just had to let go. 
Whatever approach you're taking to that stuff, hold <laughs> tight and do it. But believe though, the door open, you're allowed to evolve too. I always feel like, like do that again. But yeah, no, you know, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Like prepping for a, a movie is very different than a television mm-hmm. show, which is quite interesting. Um, yeah, like movies. Like I made a full fledged like diary, like write doodles when I was like five, at least for Ghosted, huh. and then um, for Emma, I mean, I wrote like a forty page biography of her beforehand. Oh, wow. And then do my little flair. Like, I pick up tools. Like, I'm really into science, so, like, neuroscience. Oh, I have the the follow-up question thing <laughs> happening again. Can you share something from that 40-page piece you wrote that we don't necessarily see or hear about in the show, but we can feel it informing your performance? Oh, wow. It's, like, so personal. Um, <sighs> a lot of her relationship with her mom. Mm. Like, when she got small for the first time, all her sexual experiences, um, her relationship with her dad, um, how there's, God, I haven't read that in, like, so long, but that's kind of the story, like, how she, and that she had to be perfect, you know? And, like, just, like, all these root memories that really made her believe that she's not good enough, Mm -hmm. that she has to stay small, that she's gross, and that she's ugly. So that's what I... I journaled through, like, in 40 pages of, like, just, like, root memories that Emma would have to come up with those beliefs. Oh, God. I'm so, I, I really, I mean, again, to each their own, everyone has a different process, mm-hmm. but when someone puts that level of thought into, into backstory and prepping and knowing every single layer of who someone is and why yeah. they are what they are now, I, I love that. I love hearing <laughs> about it, but I also think you see the value of that on screen in the finished product. Oh, thank you. I mean it. I mean thank it. Thank you so much. All right, here's my you two. you never know. You know, because it's, it's true. Kind of like acting's like such an, you know, well, like. Well, that I I think about that a lot when I conduct these interviews too, because like first of all, I can't wrap my brain around acting. That's why I like talking about it because right. it is such an incredible art to me that like I couldn't do. Mm-hmm. But also, I find it to be such a difficult thing to ask someone to explain away and articulate. <laughs> yeah, like because you're talking to me, you're like describe your process. I was like, I don't know how to answer because it's such a. Not woo-woo, but kind of like such a personal thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm not classically trained. I've just pulled things from other people. And I'm going to be honest, like, I really immersed myself into Emma. You know, like, I truly became her for six months, which was, like, the hardest thing I probably ever had to do so far in my career. Um, But, yeah, like, there's no right way. No, there's no. not. And when you when you're talking about acting, you're like, yeah, I act. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally what this show is about, emphasizing that there is no one right, right way, and like not even just for like different people, but all along the way. If like the next time we talk, you have a completely different approach to the work, like good on you. You found something you needed in the moment. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, like I watch a lot of interviews, and I'm like, okay, maybe I do this or that and this, but also like don't fix what's broken, but also there's opportunity to grow. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm honestly, I'm still, like, I don't have it figured out. <laughs> like, you know, I'm still grow- growing and I'm insecure sometimes with my craft. Like, oh, is, should I do this approach? Should I do that approach? So, it's all a process. Like, I'm still figuring it out, guys. That's the better way to describe it, though. I feel yeah. like if someone sat here and was like, I know exactly what I got to do every nope. time. I'm like, do you really? I have no do idea what really? I'm doing half the time. And, then, and like, <laughs> even if they did know in that moment, I'm like, well, if you keep thinking that way, how are you ever going to do something different? Yeah. Yeah. And each project, I think, is different. Mm-hmm. You know? I think that's the most nerve-wracking thing is just not doing the project. It's when you're first getting started. Because it's like a blank canvas, and there's a lot of different ways you can approach it. So that's the most nerve-wracking thing when you are invited to be on a show or a project. You're like, what? Oh, God, here we go, you know? But you zeroed in on such a special character here. <laughs> I love her so much. She's fun. She's she's so she's so much fun. She's also, like, full of, full full of, of heart. heart. And yeah. there's a lot of growth that could happen going forward. She needs therapy. She needs a lot of therapy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they all need therapy. <laughs> after with the show, with show. We should I don't have... think they're getting in that room either. <laughs> Could you imagine if... But at least she has a frappuccino. She has... Is that what that is? I have no idea. A smoothie? I don't I know. Think... I, whatever, whatever it is, if I was that stressed out and I had that in my hand, it would just make me feel that much better. It's just... <laughs> I have no idea. Like, I was reading that script and I was like, where are we? What's happening? <sighs> no one tells me anything. I was like... Is this a dream? Like, 
is everyone alive? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I was just like, what is happening? I'm like watching it with the audience. I have no idea what's happening. So you're you're not going to have like actual ant. This is more theory than for you. Mm-hmm. So my first question for the future for Emma is: at the end of season one, okay. what do you think her greatest strength is? Something that's going to come in handy in season two. But then I also want to know what is her greatest weakness at this point? The next thing she needs to overcome to be a stronger hero and person. I don't think she truly got over her insecurities yet. No. So that's something that we need to work through again. And her biggest strength, I think she could be a fighter. Mm -hmm. I think she has a lot of strength, even just like physically. I would love her, like Jordan, to train her. I think that would be a fun dynamic, you know? Um, I think there's just still, I don't think Emma's storyline was wrapped up. I don't, you know, I think she really is still struggling. And as much growth as she's, she, she went through, um, I think there's just a lot more to, to go. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. That's why we need a bajillion seasons of Gen V, <laughs> so we can explore the nuances of every stage, stage. of growth. Yeah. You kind of answered one of my questions there, because I had written down, who do you think Emma would benefit from spending more time with in season two? So we've got, we've got Jordan. Jordan. I, like, I like that answer a lot. I, you know, it's so funny, because the first season, again, like, she had Sam, Marie, and an alpaca. So, you know what I mean? like, so I'm like, okay. And seeing the quick interactions Jordan has with Emma, like, what is it? When can I cuss on this? Yeah, go for okay, it. Okay. I, I think I already and, did. In episode four, when she's like, "Holy shit, a lot is happening with Jordan." Like that was one that mm-hmm. our first interaction together, and then Jordan and female female form when she's like, "You have sex hair," and it was just these quick interactions that I was like, "These two could be a comedy duo." And I would love to see what Jordan teaches Emma and what Emma teaches Jordan. They both feel like they get each other, and they're both, like, no nonsense, too. No nonsense, but, like, Jordan's kind of cold. Emma's kind of warm and playful. Mm. You know, it'd be a fun—I feel like it'd be a very, like, sibling-esque dynamic. Okay. I would love to explore that. I'm into this idea. You know what I mean? I don't know, but I'm not a writer, so I do. <laughs> but you know your character. But I do know my character, and I think that would just be a fun character development to explore between those two characters. So oh, I'm into this. You know? Yeah. Drew's badass. Ba- really badass. badass. And that- Emma needs some, like... <laughs> that was one of the one of the characters that I think like grew on me the most. Also because like a little abrasive at the beginning of the yeah. season, but and all and also just like reminding me every step of the way, like how rich that character is, how much they're capable of, and how much there is, really how much there is to explore with every single person on the show. Yeah, I mean, that's because we have a brilliant writing team. Like, shout out to our writers. Seriously. I mean, each character has a voice. And that's really hard to find. You know what I mean? Like, when I'm reading the script, I hear everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone has such a specific voice, and it's just... I mean, our, our writers have an imagination that has no end. To be able to accomplish that, too, with such a large main ensemble is really impressive. Yeah. I have kept you for way too long. I'm going to oh, end. I'm, yeah, I like. Fun. I just realized what time it was, and I'm so sorry. Um, I'm sorry. A big, I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm glad that my job is done. A big question to end okay. on. But one thing I think that no one in this industry does enough is tell themselves good job. I think we say it to each other, and that is wonderful. But I it's think hard. we need to say it to ourselves more. So can you pinpoint one specific thing you did in Gen V that you'll know you'll be able to look back on and say to yourself, like, damn. I'm proud of what I did there. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> probably the finale scene. I think I closed that that cha- like that chapter out. You know what I mean? Like, just closed that whole arc for her for the first season. I was like, I'm, 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 I think I did Emma justice. You know what I mean? I will. I will confirm. I felt it. I yeah. felt it. You should be, you should be proud of that. You, you should be so proud much. of this whole season. And, and like everything you accomplish, again, Ghosted like made a huge impression with a limited amount of screen time that is not that, easy. I'm blushing. <laughs> like I'm trying to be cool, but I'm like, that's so kind. So thank I you. I mean it. I mean it. You got it. I have a good feeling we're going to be talking a lot more yes. in the future. The ladies' night door is always open to you. Oh my gosh, we have to. We also have a cookie show that we pitched oh, yeah. like earlier on. I need. This I need. 
I need a Yelp review in the morning. Don't forget oh, you'll get about one that. tomorrow. Okay, good. Or a video of me just like <laughs> pretending that it's good. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine with either. I know the reality of the situation. Oh my God, you are so <laughs> kind and such a pleasure to talk you to. Mean, I mean Thank it. you for making this interview because it's my first interview. So thank you for being so like warm and inviting. It's really... It's really exciting, so thank, thank you. Thank you for saying that. That's oh the God. goal. That's always oh the goal. God. We're, We're friends. <laughs> We're friends now.